we have this capacity for the awakened heart, it naturally gets shut down when we go into trance. It's not our fault, it just happens. And that this aspiration, should we practice it, will help us to be more aware of going into trance and more energized to be able to wake up from trance that we care about it, that the trance itself is like a flag. Oh, okay, judging. How might this serve the awakening of my heart? How can I deepen attention? So once we recognize the suffering of trance, that helps us to become more alert. In other words, when we feel, oh, there's distance, I feel lonely, This keeps happening again and again in relationships. Something's going on. That motivates us to deepen our attention. There's one uh, friend of mine who for a number of years was volunteering and working at a hospice. And she described one woman that she got close to. This is a woman who had cancer and had, didn't have long to live. She had a large tumor on her tongue, so she could barely talk, but she loved to talk, which was difficult. Um, this woman would come and they'd just be with each other. The company was very comforting. One day she returned. Uh, the woman was sitting on the edge of her bed, dressed and about to go home, and here's what had happened. This is a woman who's about to die. A few nights past, she'd had the worst nightmare of her life. And she dreamed that the staff at the hospice had told her she was next to die. She woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, paralyzed with fear, saying, you know, talking to God, no, no, why? I can't, I, this is not my time. And she was flooded with a sense of separation, not just from God, but from everybody in her life, and particularly from her husband. And then she got flooded with all the resentment she had been carrying. Uh, that, she, you know, ever since bringing up their children, that he wasn't doing enough, that, um, you know, that in some way she always was trying to control him to be a different person. She always, always felt like he wasn't who he should be. So this is what came up to her in, in her dream, the sense of separation. So this is the suffering of the trance that she's realizing at the end of her life. And it was motivation to deepen her attention and feel this yearning to to connect. So she said, "Um, it's not my time. I need to speak and I need to let him know I love him. So in the next two days, the tumor shrank. And she could leave. She had enough time to leave. And she went home and she could speak from her heart and name a lot of what was going on, her own fears and vulnerabilities and the pain that she now is experiencing by creating that kind of a distance and asking for forgiveness. And then she returned to the hospice and was able to die peacefully. To hold back our love is the deepest suffering. And that's what happens when we're in trance. So when we start feeling that suffering, we get motivated. And that vow, please, may these patterns, whatever I'm in, may that awaken me, actually saves us time. We can, instead of being in that trance for decades, start really catching on and deepening our attention much more quickly. We don't have to wait till we're at the end of our life. Mm -hmm.